So, do you want to be more in control of your own mind? Are you looking to increase your performance in any, in any given situation? And how cool would it be not only to be in control of your mind, but to be able to influence and manipulate the minds of your competitors or anybody who you dare try? So in this short video, we're going to be looking at how Conor McGregor utilizes mind games in order to enhance his performance while being very detrimental and reducing the performance potential of any competitor that he comes across. Now, if you're a fighter, you can use this in the ring, you can use this in the press conferences, you can use it in the boardroom, you can use it in an interview, you can use it on someone who's trying to pinch a partner off you. You can use it down the pub with the lads. But if you start learning how to control this more, 100%, you will optimize the way you think feel and then perform to be a better version of you. So welcome back to the Believe in Bruce channel. Performance, psychology, body language, awareness, mental health and self-care. If you're interested in anything to do with the head and the heart, then take two seconds to subscribe below, give me a like for the algorithm and also anything I say, which is the important part for me, that resonates with you, that's relevant for you, that you think was a good learning point from this video, put your comments below. And also, please share this video. It's great to support the channel like that. Now, Conor McGregor is renowned, all right, renowned, for previous use of mind games. Poirier, the fight that's going on this weekend, all right? He used it on Poirier. Adi Alvarez, yeah, to become that two-weight world champion. But one of the best examples for me was when he used a chronic, a chronic example, which is ongoing, multiple interactions was with Aldo, yeah, that 13 second knockout. But the point is this, regardless of whether you believe it or not, the art of psychological skullduggery is alive and kicking in any situation, not just fighting, in any situation where you either come up against yourself, yeah, your own mind, or that of somebody else who you may be trying to compete against, you may be trying to influence, or win their approval as well. But what is actually going on in mind games? You know, we hear this sort of, um, very vague, very mystical, oh yeah, he's the master of mind games. But what is actually going on from a psychological perspective, a physiological perspective, when somebody is playing mind games with you? And how can you learn from that? How can you benefit from that by being more in control of your thoughts and feelings? And ultimately your competitors' thoughts and feelings as well. Well, really when we talk about mind games, what we're talking about is stressors. All right, so stress is the adaptation process that the body will go through to try and deal with stressors that has been presented to it. And this is what we see with Conor McGregor, and this is what you can utilize as well. Conor McGregor, for Aldo example, right, because that was probably one of the best examples for me, puts across a chronic and ongoing, numerous, relentless number of interactions with Jose Aldo. But that's what we call chronic, so it wasn't a one-off like acute, it is a chronic, it is an ongoing um, interaction with Aldo that starts messing with Aldo's brain, all right? Because the power of thought, where everything comes from, from a human performance psychology perspective, the power of thought is stage one. If you can, as we say in the fight game, get into somebody's head, then that could help you exponentially to potentially damage their performance potential while enhancing yours. So this is what we see with Jose Aldo. Conor McGregor was just on at him again and again and again. Conor McGregor is very quick, admittedly. He's very quick, he's very gregarious. He's got that humor, he's got the banner, which is always advantageous when you're looking at an angle of trying to get under somebody's skin. But also what Conor McGregor does, which is something that you can replicate as well, is he researches his opponent. He knows which buttons to press. It's a bit like a tradesperson. You know, you'll end up paying a tradesperson 100 quid to come and hit your boiler with the hammer, but you pay them that money because they know which part to hit, even if it's just once, all right? And this is what you get from researching your competitors. Now, admittedly, universally, all right? So not idiosyncratic, which is just specific to the person. On a universal perspective, there's some things that you can prepare in your back pocket that you can say to any competitor at any given time that will spark their amygdala, that will spark their adrenaline um, production within the body. Because you're after someone becoming reactive, all right? You're after someone becoming reactive. And if you do your research on that person, there will be certain things that you find that they react well to and they don't react well to. The things that they don't react well to, that's where you want to start going in for. Because what we're looking at is this sweet spot, the inverted you that I've talked about multiple times on previous videos, is that you need certain stressors to get you in your sweet spot. But too much stressors, then you start going back down and your performance is diminished. So by a chronic example, a narrative of Connor constantly going after Jose Aldo, what he doing is he pushed him up into his sweet spot and then actually passed his sweet spot. What the actual output was of that 
is that he affected Jose Aldo's performance come fight night. Well, Aldo went to throw that right hand, which he just, he, he shouldn't have threw it. You know, he's given multiple interviews in the past, but he was just angry and he just wanted to beat Connor, as in physically rather than tactically. So by Connor using that method, by Connor putting that stuff out there, by him giving that constant ongoing um, impact on Jose's amygdala, the stress hormones, cortisol, etc., thinking, feeling, performing, the performance was he threw a punch when he shouldn't have, and that's when Connor caught him with that left hand. But think about you here, I'm going to do some experiential reflection. So you post something on social media, 99 people say that it's brilliant. One person says that it's terrible. One person says, Bruce, that's crap, you're a prick. You don't know what you're talking about. What do you focus on? Do you focus on the 99 positive things or the one negative? Oof, the one negative, the sleeves get rolled up, we're ready for war. We start doing the hacker in our bedroom, yeah? <laughs> what this really comes to is understanding why stressors work on certain individuals, why it works on us. You see, when we are viewed as being attacked, when somebody says something that we don't like, when something irritates us, again, it's the amygdala response. Yeah, that mesolimbic pathway, we want dopamine, we don't want cortisol, we want to be embraced. And it, you know, definitely in a universe where we've been conditioned by likes and lols, anybody who says something against us, boom, it can be quite impactful if it makes us feel embarrassed, if it makes us feel excluded from the group, if it, you know, if it doesn't take into account our feelings. But you can use this if you're trying to use it for your advantage against an opponent. So just by me giving you that example there, you understand when we talk about the Hulk, all right, that everybody has got a Hulk. Everybody has got this anger, emotion, we're animalistic, yeah? Our humanistic tendencies are to try and protect ourselves and be involved within the herd for self-preservation. You know, it goes back to, especially if you're a male, that somebody embarrasses you. If you reverse engineer that feeling, we perceive it, doesn't mean it's true, but we perceive it as it could impact our, our mating capabilities, our uh, abilities to procreate, our, our very you know, fundamental self-preservation. So what you're looking for within your opponent, and again, use that term loosely, opponent could mean anything, is what will set off their amygdala, what will set off their hulk, what will they find offensive, what will they find irritable, and then say that, even though it may make you feel uncomfortable. And the more times you can do that in any given situation and hold that train of thought, the more preparation you can do. Again, Conor McGregor's quick, but he does his preparation as well. That's how you can use, especially if you're having someone who's, you know, really going against you, who is bullying you, who is being really detrimental to your health, safety, well-being, however you want to look at it, is prepare yourself for that. Go in, research the subject and have some things that you become that tradesman. Uh, when you come up and as that tradesperson, you're looking at that, you know, that person as the boiler and you know if I just hit that part there at that particular time, I'm going to get the reaction that I'm after. That's exactly what Conor McGregor does. Everything that you can do can be diluted, can be boiled down to Conor McGregor knows what to say at what particular time, depending on the individual, that sets off their amygdala, that sends off their stress hormones. They, they stop being the best version of themselves, all because Conor knew where to hit at what particular time he had the courage to do it. So mind games, it's something that we all can do and you're more than capable of doing it yourself to make sure that you're prepared more than your competitor to give the advantage of winning whatever situation you find yourself in. Hope you've enjoyed that video. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. If you've got any comments, leave them below. But more important than any of this, believe in Bruce. Remember to be kind to yourselves and each other.